Greetings and welcome. We are in Junior English, and we are now going to turn very briefly to a small poem by Oliver Wendell Holmes, Old Ironsides it's called, and I'm with you on 265 and following. I want to point out two things about Oliver Holmes before we begin, okay? The first thing I want to point out is that Oliver Holmes is a, another one of our fireside poets, so I'd write that down for sure. Fireside poets. Now, just to remind what that means, two things. One, a poet that the normal people will enjoy to read. An entertainer, you might say, of sorts. Remember, they would read around the fireside at night because they have any TV. So, this is a poet who is going to entertain. Number two, he is a poet that will speak powerful and optimistic messages to his reader audience, okay? Now, today's poem is an interesting project in metaphor. So I want to write that down in 2B really quickly. Metaphor, metaphor, M-E-T-A-P-H-O-R, metaphor. Holmes was aware of any number of political issues at play at the time he writes this poem. You want to write this down for sure. The War of 1812 was still in Holmes's memory when he writes this poem. There was a very important ship during the War of 1812 called the USS Constitution. That was the name of the ship. You want to write that down. The USS Constitution. Now, for those of us that love to follow military naval history, we know about the large aircraft carriers today where over 5,000 people live on those aircraft carriers, those amazing uh, um, uh, battle uh, weapons in the different oceans of the world. We're talking about a totally different kind of ship back in the day. First of all, back in the day, the USS Constitution is all wood and a little bit of metal, but all wood, okay? So it is a ship that can only be propelled by sails. If you look on page 266, you've got a little picture of what this kind of thing is about. The problem with these kinds of vessels is that they deteriorate over time. I would write that down. They wear out. They just do. They're in the ocean water, the salt water. The salt water gets in the wood. It starts to make it decay and crack. And after time, it starts to wear out. Okay? The challenge now is, when, and, and it's the reason why Holmes is going to write this poem. Are you ready for this? The USS Constitution was about to be taken out of service. All right? It was going to be destroyed. Holmes points out, this is no way for a great and a mighty ship to go, to go out. His argument will be, rather it would be better to take it out to sea and let it sink there. In other words, let it have its final voyage instead of just destroying it in port. Okay? Now, that's a simple idea. An old boat, show it the honor of allowing it to have one last voyage, especially because of the history of this, of this ship. It had been in many battles and had helped win many battles. That's simple. The metaphor involved here is more interesting, and it begins with this question, and I want you to write it down at level 2A. The question is a fascinating one, and it is this. What do you do with old people? This is the geriatric question. What do you do with old people? Now in this poem we're going to be talking about an old ship. But very easily because we read in metaphor one thing can stand for another thing. What do you do with people who grow old and can no longer perform in the same ways they did when they were young? That's a very interesting question. Do they still have value? Should they be shown respect? This is often what we'll refer to as the geriatric question. 
Now what's funny about this is the mathematics just doesn't compute for juniors. But that's only because you haven't thought about it. Go downstairs or upstairs or somewhere in your house where your mom, if she has it, has hung some picture of you when you were in fifth grade. And if those pictures are not on the wall, thankfully, then maybe you can go and find them in some kind of an album of sorts. Look at yourself at fifth grade and then do the quick math how long ago that was. Identify the ways you're already changing. Take a look at the number of years you've lived and add that number of years to your parents' age right now. For how many of you will your parents be closer and closer to the age of retirement at 65 or beyond? Question, what will it be like when you finally have to go up to the person who has raised you and say, Ma, I love you, but I got to have the car keys. Give them to me. You, you can't drive anymore. If you want to go to the store, you let me take you. You give me a call, I'll take you. I can't have you drive anymore. Give me the car keys. What will that be like to go up to your mom, to your dad, to somebody who you love and say, you've gotten too old, honey. We got to have the keys. I'm sorry. Because in the moment you do that, notice all the reversals have happened. The very person who took care of you when you were young, now you're taking care of as they age. But in that same moment, you're aware there will come a moment when somebody is going to come up to you who is younger than you and say, hey, I need the keys. You can't do it anymore. What do you mean I can't do it? I am fine. You get out of my face. No, I'm sorry, hon. Give me the keys. You want to go to the grocery store, I will drive you to the grocery store. See what I'm saying? Question, what happens when you grow old? Who takes care of you? Who celebrates your life? Who remembers you? How do you grow old is the fundamental question of old Ironsides. Now I'm reading with you on 267. It's a very brief poem, but let's go ahead and take a look at it nonetheless, beginning with our background information. The battleship Constitution earned its nickname of Old Ironsides for withstanding British attacks during the War of 1812. By 1830, however, it's outworn its usefulness. The ship was slated for, there's the word, you may want to write it down, demolition. Holmes wrote the, point, uh, the poem to protest this decision. The popular verse saved the ship and won Holmes early fame as a poet. Wow, that's pretty cool, huh? Very rarely do you find that a poet writes something that really does change anything. And in this case, it did. People became very sentimental about this old ship and said, you know what? We probably ought to let this ship have its remembrance. Let's not destroy it. Let's go ahead and let it stay intact. Let's take a look now at Old Ironsides. Follow along as you listen to our professional reader work with this text. Let's enjoy this for just a moment, shall we? Old Ironsides. Old Ironsides by Oliver Wendell Holmes. I tear her tattered ensign down. Long has it waved on high. And many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. Beneath it rung the battle shout and burst the cannon's roar. The meteor of the ocean air shall sweep the clouds no more. Her deck, once red with heroes' blood, where knelt the vanquished foe, when winds were hurrying o'er the flood and waves were white below, no more shall feel the victor's tread or know the conquered knee. The harpies of the shore shall pluck the eagle of the sea. Oh, better that her shattered hulk should sink beneath the wave. Her thunder shook the mighty deep, and there should be her grave. Nailed to the mast her holy flag, set every threadbare sail, and give her to the god of storms, the lightning and the gale. Very brief little poem. Let's point out really quickly at level one, this is a pretty simple poem for us to write down, isn't it? Level one for us, a summary of this poem. Notice he begins by saying, it's over. It's over. This amazing ship that's had all of these amazing uh, battles has now finally reached its end. Because in the end, all things have to age. Even battleships have to age. The time has come, they're telling us to get rid of it. But notice in the second stanza, he starts to remember what this ship has done. He 
hero's blood on the deck of the ship. Men died on this ship protecting America, he says. And the enemies had to be brought onto the ship and had to kneel in front of the commander. And he says, all of a sudden now, no more hero's blood. No more kneeling. It's ended. It's ended. Which then leads him to the third stanza and an observation that would again save this ship from demolition. Wait a minute, he says. If you're a great and mighty battleship, you shouldn't die your last death in harbor. This ship should be out at sea one final time to make one last voyage into the storm and that's where it should go. It should rest with the sea because of the respect that is owed to the ship. Level 1. Level 2A. Well now obviously this is a, this is a poem about saving a battleship. So, you know, that's self-evident at level 1. But now we're going to ask the question, what does a text like this actually mean? Not what does it say, but what does it mean? And the obvious question here is, how do you celebrate the aged? How do you celebrate what grows old? Let's write down an idea or two on this one, shall we? What in your estimation is old? Let's start at 3B. For example, you can write down right now your own age, and you can kind of think about it. At what point will you constitute yourself as old? 30? Basically double the age you are now? 40? You're almost halfway there. 50? Whoa, that's half of a hundred years. 60? At 60, finally, people start talking the R word, don't they? What is the R word? Maybe some of you have even started to hear it in your own houses, or you've heard your grandma or grandpa use the word retirement. Retirement, which means you used to work, but now you don't work anymore. It is interesting to me, and I pointed this out a number of times in our time and lectures together, then when I first came to Worland, I made an observation that several people smiled at, and one of them even said, leave it to an English teacher. But I was new to the community, and I said, you know, I find it odd that the geography of this town is such that in one building we have the most young and dynamic people of our community, all in one place. On any given morning during school year, all of the youngest, most dynamic people in our city are in this building their dreams, their hopes. What, what are we going to be? What are we going to do? It's going to be so exciting. And directly across the street, if you could throw a baseball well, you could throw it from this building and almost hit that building. Across the street is another building where the oldest of our community live. Waiting to die. They can't take care of themselves anymore. They have to live in that building. Are you ready for this? They even put windows out on that building so that the people in those rooms can look out the windows at you guys walking out for lunch. Whoa, what's that got to be like? What's it got to be like to sit in a room in a building where everybody knows what's going on over there? It's not like you get to leave that place and then go somewhere else to go, you know, go, go live another life. Uh, uh. That building is the last building. What's it like to sit in a room and look out a window and see you walking out to go to lunch? Talking with your friends, laughing, skipping along, talking about your life and all your future plans. What's it like to be on the other end? This poem asks, what kind of respect does a great life demand? See, because here's the thing. A lot of times, the older things get, the more quickly they're forgotten. Would you agree with me? So, for example, this battleship had done amazing things, but most of the people who had been involved in that themselves were old, and younger people had made the decision, it's time to get rid of the ship, let's blow it up, whatever, destroy it. And Oliver Wendell Holmes says, wait, wait, wait. Let's use the word respect. Let's write that down in 2A. This is a poem about 
respect of the aged. Now, of course, we can also study this poem at level 2B and its rhetorical meter. For example, notice Holmes. He's pretty good at it. Look at the opening lines. Ah, tear her tattered ensign down, long as it waved on high, and many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. In other words, it's time to tear down the ensign. It's time to tear down the flag. It's time to destroy the ship. But wait a minute. There's another way to read these lines. Read them with me and notice. Ah, tear her tattered ensign down, long has it waved on high, and many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. Ba bum 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 ba bum. Do you see it? The entire poem is structured with this intentional meter, meter, the rhythm of the poem. Okay. Question at two B. Why do you think Holmes wrote a poem with that meter? One student pointed out. You know, it's interesting, I was on a boat once, and guess what? It had a certain rocking movement that was kind of like this. Ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. Right? Also, if you were taking somebody to be buried, the way you did it was put them in a cart, and everyone walked behind the cart on the way to the cemetery. In front of all the people behind the cart, was usually a young kid with a drum. And he would hit the drum in time. And everyone would walk to the rhythm of the drum. That drum was not ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. No. That drum was rather ba bum ba bum ba bum. So Holmes is playing interesting games here with his meter as he talks about the end of a great ship, the end of the life of a great ship. Let's jump to level three. Of course, this is pretty simple for us at 3A. What is for you your favorite text, for example, about war and about battle? Do you have a favorite film about battleships? Is there a video game that, for example, you've played that celebrates battleships or tanks, machines of war? Are you at all familiar in movies that you've seen with the question of somebody who used to be great but now is old? I like to talk to my seniors about this. And I say, homecoming at our high school, the night of the big football game. And at halftime, the announcer will say, if you played for Whirlin' Warrior football, please stand up. And all these guys start standing up. And you start looking around if you're in the stands. And every once in a while, there's some really, really old guy. It takes 10 minutes for him to get out of his wheelchair as he stands up. And somebody sitting next to you goes, Oh, man, I wish you could have seen that kid when he was 18. He put up 450 pounds on a bench over his face. He would light them up. And you're looking at this little man who kind of does this to stand up. Ooh. Do you have a film or a movie that celebrates an old life? And maybe the struggles of coming to terms with that fact that we're getting older and we don't always like it because people don't always respect the life that we once lived a long time ago. Finally, 3B. What is your views about the older when was the last time you got stuck driving behind one? You're like, are you kidding me? When was the last time that you were face to face with an older person and maybe you didn't show a lot of respect? The last time, for example, you saw a man or a woman in uniform that's older and you didn't even go up and shake their hand and say, thank you for your service to our great country. When was the last time that happened to you? And all of a sudden it hits you. Ooh, the old man appears right. There has to be respect paid for a life that has been lived because someday that will be you. The only other option is an early exit. That's the only other option. Sooner or later, you too shall grow old. How will young people respect you? Another 3B question. When it comes time for your ship to be destroyed, 
How do you want it to be destroyed? Do you want it to be destroyed? How do you want to go? Do you want to go in the harbor? Or out in the action? On the sea? If you have to go, how would you like to go? Another 3B question. If this was your last day to live because some tragedy took your life, what would those who are closest to you say about you tomorrow in your absence? What words would they speak about you? Would they write poems about you, for example? Would they speak important lines about you? Would they remember something important that you did? Would they speak about you as a good person? Would they speak about you as someone who loved your country and took care of people? How would they talk about you if you left? Notice how we've taken a poem about an old battleship that was going to be destroyed and we've turned it into something personal at level three. Do you understand what we've done? At 3B, we take the ideas and we relate them to us personally so that we can remember the title long after the fact. Let's say thank you again to Oliver Wendell Holmes and best of luck growing old.